Now we're going to talk about a different way to accomplish a rotation using reflections. If you remember when we were looking at translations, we did a translation by using a composition transformation of two reflections across parallel lines, and we were able to accomplish a translation using a, tra using a reflection. Okay, what you're finding out is reflections mimic some of the other transformations, or the other transformations mimic reflections. So reflections are sort of a mixed bag. Reflections across intersecting lines results in a rotation of two times the acute angle, or the right angle, of the intersecting lines. Now, read that. And if you're anything like me, you're going to read it and get just as confused as you did the first time. And the more you read it, the more confused you get. So let's look at this. Reflection across intersecting lines. We have two intersecting lines. Results in a rotation of two times the acute angle. So we measure the acute angle. In this case, this angle is 55 degrees. That's the acute angle, not the obtuse angle. Or the right angle, and we'll do that in a minute, of the intersecting lines. So... If we reflect across two of the intersecting lines, okay, results in two times the acute angle. Well, two times the acute angle is what? 55 times 2 is 110. So if we reflect it across, let's label these lines. We're going to say line M and line N, okay? So if we reflect it across line M, we get A prime B prime. Whoops, let's do this. Let's take that off. A prime B prime. And then if we reflect it across N, we get A double prime B double prime. And what we've got is the segment A double prime B double prime is 110 clockwise, because we're going to the right, rotation about point C of segment AB. So if we reflect across two intersecting lines, then that's the same thing as us saying, oh, we just did a rotation about, take the acute angle, multiply it times 2, we just did a rotation about C of the same thing. Now, if we were to reflect over here, it would be a counterclockwise direction instead of clockwise. Okay? Now, let's take this and put it on the coordinate grid, and let's do it in 90 degrees. We have the original triangle of ABC. We have a coordinate grid. We know that grid. The axes are at right angles, okay? So we're going to take this and we're going to flip it across the x-axis. When we do that, we end up with A prime, B prime, C prime. Now let's flip it across the y-axis. So we flipped it across two intersecting lines. Those axes are intersecting at right angles. And we result with triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime is a 180 rotation about the origin of triangle ABC. Okay? Notice it's just a turn. If I start here, go to the left, I've got ABC. Now we have to maintain point orientation. ABC to the left. If I go to the left, ABC. ABC. Okay? I go to the left, I keep the same points. It doesn't matter which direction we go when we have right when two intersecting lines intersect at right angles. Why? Because we can go across this way. Let's jump across the y-axis first and then across the x. What's going to happen? The same thing. Flip it across here, flip it across here, we end up with the same thing. Okay? So it's another way to achieve rotations is through reflections across two intersecting lines. Okay? Something you need to know, understand how to do, look at it, Study it. Homework and test. The last part we want to talk about on rotations is rotations within the coordinate grid. What we're going to do is take a very specialized case. We're going to use 90 degrees and show you what the rules for rotating things in the coordinate grid around 90 degrees are. Why? Because you'll use this uh, on the coordinate grid. If you're on a coordinate grid and you're rotating 90 degrees, this is an easy way to figure out where you need to put your points. Rotation of the coordinate grid, plane or grid. The rules. If I want to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, that's to the right, I take my original X and Y, I'm going to 
call A and B, we flip them and negate the Y, the new Y. Okay? That's the rule. We take those, we converse them, and we flip the new Y, and we negate the new Y. Now, if I want to rotate 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction or to the left, I do the same thing. I do the converse, and then I negate the new X. Okay? I negate the new X. Now, 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. Why does it not matter which direction I go on 180 degrees? Answer that question? Okay, I'll let you figure that one out. Why does it not matter if we go 180 degrees if I go to the left or I go to the right? What we do is we take the A and the B, we don't converse them, we leave them the same, we just simply negate both of them. Now where have we seen that rule before? Just read it. Same as the rules for reflection across the origin. Okay, I'm going to pull this off. Same as the rule for reflection across the origin. Rotation of 180 degrees about the origin is the same as the rule for reflection across the origin on the coordinate grid. Wow, reflection across the origin is the same as doing a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin? Yes, it is. Exact same thing. So do you want to do a rotation? you want to do a reflection in order to get a 180 degree thing? It doesn't matter. You can do either one. Now what we've got is we've got a sample over here of exactly, we use our good old triangle ABC. We've got three points. A is at 2, 2. B is at 5, 4. C is at 4, 1. Now you can take this either direction you want to. Notice if you go 180 degrees, we're simply going to leave those alone. Every one of these is going to turn into a negative. Okay? So we come over. That's what that is. If we rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, then what happens? We're going to obey this rule. We're going to flip these. Oh, wow. We can't tell whether or not we flip that one or not. But we're going to negate which one? The new X. Flip those. Negate the X. Flip. Negate the X. If we rotate clockwise to the right, 90 degrees, we're going to flip and negate the Y. So this, oh, didn't know we flipped. Can't tell. Okay, so we just simply negate the Y. Do the same. We flip these two and negate the Y. Flip and negate the new Y. Those are the rules for rotation about the origin 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So that brings us to a close for reflections. Quite a bit of information about reflections. Um, no, we're not quite through. We still have one more section. I'm sorry. Uh, but quite a bit of information about rotations. Okay, now we finally have the last part of rotation. Quite a few things on rotation. Lots of things you can do with it. It's an important transformation. We use it a tremendous amount in upper level sciences to be able to do what we've done in this world and in this universe. Um, important things. Last one is rotational symmetry. Lines of symmetry where we can fold things in half. Points of symmetry where we can reflect across a point and create the other half of an image. Rotational symmetry is very similar. Is there a way... Basically, let's read the definition. The ability to rotate a pre-image less than 360 degrees. Obviously, if I rotate it 360 degrees, I will get back to itself. The ability to rotate a pre-image less than 360 degrees so that you cannot tell the difference between the pre-image and the image. You can hide it inside of itself in less than 360 degrees. The order of rotational symmetry is the number of times you can turn the figure within 360 degrees and hide it. How many times can I turn it before I get back to 360 and hide it? Obviously, every figure has rotational symmetry of 1 and magnitude of 360. The magnitude of rotational symmetry is the number of degrees you turn a figure each time you hide it. All right, let's put this into practice on an example so you can tell what's going on. Let's use a square. Okay, let's take a square. We're going to label points A, B, C, D. Now I'm going to turn it. If we did not have the points labeled, you would not know that I had turned this 
90 degrees, which direction? A is going to the right, so that would be clockwise. So I have turned this, rotated it 90 degrees to the right. That's one time. Oh, well, let's do it again. Again, if we didn't have the points there, you would not be able to tell that I had turned that. And let's do it again. And finally, after I've turned it one, two, three, four times, I'm back to the original. So how many times were we able to turn it within the 360 degrees and hide it? One, two, three, four. So what's the order? The order is four. Well, how far did I turn it each time? The number of times I turn it times the magnitude has to equal 360. Okay? So four times 90 degrees equals 360. Okay? It's a way for us to find out what the magnitude is. Turn this 90 degrees. Again 90 degrees, again 90 degrees, again 90 degrees. So the order is 4. Turn it 4 times to hide it within itself, within 360 degrees. And each time I turn it, I turn it 90. 90 times 4 equals 360 degrees. Rotational symmetry.